Namaste. Welcome to Youth TV Show. Our guest for today's episode is Daniel Orth. He is a program officer at Croc Institute for Peace and Justice at University of San Diego. The goal of the Nepal Emerging Leaders Program is for communities to better meet the needs of all of their people, uh, to create a more peaceful and prosperous Nepal, one where violence and conflict, protest, uh, are no longer necessary to resolve disagreements or uh, push the interests of community members forward. The diversity of our participants is really a key dimension to the Nepali Emerging Leaders Program. Um, Nepal is such a diverse place in terms of ethnicity, caste, geographic region. Um, you know, it has all these different uh, identities within it. And in order to develop solutions that are going to really create change for the country, you need to have all these individuals, all these groups represented as part of the decision-making process and the solution development. So from the very beginning as we were planning this project, we really envisioned a, an extremely diverse group coming together. And so that's exactly what we've done um, in drawing participants from all of the country's 14 zones, um, from across the three main geographic regions, from different ethnic groups and castes, working in different um, fields in different areas, um, and from a variety of the mainstream political parties as well. You know, we've really got a group that represents a broad section of Nepal. And you know, that's one of the things that we think is most exciting. It's one of the things that when we you know, talk about our participants and show the participant lists to individuals, um, people are most often blown away by it, that they're just floored that we're able to get uh, such a diverse, unique group together in the room. Um, you look at the launching event that we held yesterday to, to kick off the program, and here you've got uh, former Prime Minister Chand, who's up there speaking, who was Prime Minister during the Civil War. You've got um, Maoists who had taken up arms against him while he was in government, and they're together in the same room and talking about the value of leadership and talking about the value of this program. And, and so I think that kind of diversity, diversity of experience, diversity of political party um, is really important. Certainly over the course of our first seminar together, a lot of the participants um, and other attendees commented on how unique they felt that it was and how different it was from other initiatives that they've seen here in Nepal. You know, I think there's oftentimes trainings where individuals will come and they'll listen to a couple of presentations. It's very passive. It's very, um, you know, the expert is in front of the room and is imparting knowledge to these individuals. Um, I think the Nepali Emerging Leaders Program creates space for these individuals to be engaged, to be active, to be active participants in what we're trying to do. I think the program also really recognizes that our participants are really experienced and have a lot of knowledge. And you know, we're creating a space in which they can share that knowledge with each other. It's not as though the facilitators that we're bringing in are the only experts in the room and that all the knowledge is flowing one direction. Um, I think the program really creates opportunity to get that full exchange of knowledge um, from all the participants. The Nepali Emerging Leaders Program is going to achieve its goal uh, through two main avenues. One is by developing and supporting more effective leaders who are able to engage the full spectrum of their communities to develop solutions. And we see that happening through three main avenues. One is through training in skills and knowledge building, um, topics that we feel like are important for Nepal's leaders to, to effectively develop solutions, to effectively work with their communities. Um, the second piece is through workshops where the participants are gonna be able to come together and develop solutions together, problem solve, talk about challenges, um, so that we're not just directing knowledge from experts, but we're really recognizing the expertise that our participants bring themselves and creating a space in which they're able to, to work, you know, creating time for them to, to work together. And the third aspect of developing and supporting those leaders is the support part. One of the other pieces of the program too is that uh, we have this team of uh, consultants in the fields of legal, um, security, and media. Uh, and those three individuals are also available to provide advice, to provide support, to provide guidance to the participants um, throughout the next 12 months. And so as participants leave our in-person seminars and they go back to their communities and they go back to their work, it's really important that they have the support that they need to, to do the work that they're trying to do. So whether it's something like filing a legal case or understanding how uh, to you know, register a protest with police 
or how to effectively use the media to get their message out. You know, we wanted them to have these individuals to help provide that support to them. Um, and then the second main way that the Nepali Emerging Leaders Program achieves its goal is by creating this intergenerational cohort of leaders. And so the program includes a very important mentorship dimension where each of our participants has been paired with uh, a mainstream mentor who will be there to support them, to guide them, to share their experience and their connections with our participants. And at the same time, we're building in a, a second level of mentorship where our participants, the emerging leaders, will be engaging with student leaders back in their home communities. And so we've really got these three different levels of leadership in Nepal that are all gonna be working together and connected. I think the reason that mentorship is so important is that if we look at successful individuals, especially successful leaders, really across the world and, and going back into our history, we find that all those individuals had a mentor who helped to uh, support them, who helped to uh, build their knowledge based on their own experience, um, who helped to create connections for them, um, and really just generally helped to support them. Um, leadership is a difficult thing, and you face a lot of challenges as a leader. You put yourself out there, you subject yourself to criticism and attack, um, and it can be very difficult. And having somebody who's there to support you, who's behind you, is really crucial, and I think that's a role that mentors play. The Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice and the Leadership Academy have been working together for more than 15 years now here in Nepal. And um, obviously there's a lot of time to, to work together and to put programs together, and uh, there's a pretty deep uh, well of experience um, within the Institute and within the Leadership Academy. And, and based on all of those years of working together, we've really seen um, some of the topics and areas that are important, the topics and areas that work. And so as we were planning for the Nepali Emerging Leaders Program and as we were developing the curriculum, we thought a lot about what were the topics that needed to be covered during these sessions um, to really create the kind of leadership that uh, we felt like the country needed. Um, we also had a lot of conversations with friends and, and people around the country to talk to them about, you know, what are the gaps that you see in leadership? As we started to talk to our mentors that we had assembled, these you know, very respected, very experienced um, mainstream leaders, you know, we asked them, where do you see the gaps in leadership here in Nepal? And so we had a, a lot of input from you know, very experienced individuals who could talk about you know, in their experience, their years, where do they see the challenges? And, and based on those consultations, we were really able to put together what we think is a, a very comprehensive curriculum, a very diverse curriculum that touches upon a lot of different um, topics um, that will create the best possible scenario for our leaders to be effective. I think there's a couple of things about the Nepali Emerging Leaders Program that are really unique. For one thing is the mentorship dimension. I think that mentorship is something that has not been fully developed in Nepal. A lot of individuals, I believe, and as I've heard, are you know are really scared to empower others for fear of losing their own positions, losing their own connections, um, for these individuals to be competitors to them. So to have this mentorship component where these mainstream leaders uh, are able to support and guide our emerging leaders, I think is something really important and also something really unique. The other piece is, is the cohort idea. There's a lot of programs that work on improving individual capacity through you know, capacity building trainings, increasing the, the knowledge or the skills of an individual. But the idea of asking our participants to come together to collaborate, to develop solutions together, to support each other, to be more than just individuals, but to be a team, I think is another very unique dimension to the program. As we were developing the Nepali Emerging Leaders Program, we really thought about what population we wanted to work with, um, who we thought was going to be able to create the greatest change within the country. And this group of emerging leaders between the ages of 25 and 40 emerged as, as a group that's, I think, too often neglected. A lot of programs focus on younger individuals, focus on students, and obviously, you know, they're super important to work with. But what we had found was a lot of the individuals that we had engaged through our programs had ended up then moving abroad for economic opportunities um, or had gone into different fields then. And, and we felt like a lot of the human capital that we had developed through those workshops, through those trainings, was being lost. And then, you know, we felt like these emerging leaders really had a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. And, and it was important for us to develop a program that was going to to give them the platform that would allow them to take these ideas, to take this energy um, and channel it in a really positive direction to come up with solutions. 
So we just finished the first of four seminars here in Kathmandu. Um, we chose to hold that first session here in the capital, um, as it is the capital of the country, and we wanted an opportunity to take the participants to a number of important sites around the capital, like the Supreme Court, uh, to meet with some of the ministries, to Nepal television. Despite four pretty full days of uh, sessions together and um, site visits around Kathmandu, um, we really had an amazing time together. I'm incredibly impressed by the motivation, the passion, and really the leadership of the individuals that we have as part of this cohort. Watching them day in and day out come, participate actively, be engaged was really inspiring. The support we've gotten too from other individuals who have heard about the program, from the mentors who are part of the program, all of the kind words that they've had to say about this program being something really unique and special, something that they really can envision uh, benefiting Nepal has definitely been very encouraging. And so leaving Nepal uh, right now, after the first of four seminars, I couldn't be more excited about what we're gonna do over the next couple of months. Over the course of the next 11 months, um, we'll hold three more in-person seminars, um, one each in Nepal's three geographic areas. So in April, we'll hold a session in the mountains, um, later on in the year, in the summer, we'll hold a session in the hills. And then finally, towards the end of the year, we'll hold the last seminar and the graduation in the Terai. Those sessions will all be two-day sessions that will include uh, the types of topics that we've talked about already in terms of knowledge and skills training and uh, workshop sessions where the participants are working together. Um, in between the in-person sessions, uh, the participants are working on assignments that ask them to put into practice uh, the skills, the knowledge that we've talked about during the sessions. And we're also creating opportunities to really strengthen that cohort dimension um, by encouraging them to talk to each other, to collaborate, um, to be in regular communication. Thank you for watching us. You can follow us at facebook.com Leadership Academy KTN. We will be back next week with a new episode of Youth TV Show. Namaste.